I don't forget to call a plumber. You tell him I want that leak fixed before I get back. Yes, dear. And, um, maybe you'd better stay out of my office while I'm gone. Well, I've got some important papers on my desk, and, and you know what happened last time. I'm sorry. I was just trying to... I know, I know. I don't want to take any chances, okay? Now, what was number one? Keep the thermostat set on 69. Number two? Number two is take the 75 watt bulbs out of all the lamps, put in 60 watts. And? And, and, and store the 75 watt bulbs in the green cabinet in the garage. Right. I calculate that alone will save us 98 cents a month. Or almost $12 a year. Now what was number three? Number three is... We just went over this. Stay out of your office. No, that's number four. Number three is... Number three... Oh dear. You know it. Call the plumber. Right. Now what is the last and always the most important thing I ask of you? What was that? Don't drive your car. Good girl. Oh, there's my ride. I'm off. Goodbye, dear. Have a nice trip. It's business. Well, have a safe trip. How's it going, Mazzy? You remember me? Oh, of course I do. John. Brandon. Brandon Winters. You remember me, don't you? Yeah, sure. I guess. Well, look, I've got some spare time and a pocket full of cash, if you've got the place. Look, uh, Brandon. Not right now. I'm on a break, okay? Come on, Mac. Leave the lady alone. Beat it. What?
Maisie, I've told you before, I don't want you hooking in here. This ain't no joint. Come on, Wanda. The guy came on to me. I didn't invite him over. I ain't hooking in here. I'm on a break, okay? This is a nice place, and I aim to keep it that way. I was freezing my assets off out there. I just wanted to come in here and warm up a minute, drink my coffee, and I'll be on my way. Well, you can drink all the coffee you want. I just don't want you bothering my customers. Talking to me, lady? Yes. Are you, um, by any chance, a whore? Am I a what? Oh, please. No offense intended. Well, none taken, bitch. I'd mess it up. I always do. Jerry says I'm just about the best in the world at saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. I'm always embarrassing him at social functions, and he threatens to never take me anywhere. Whoa, whoa, hang on a second. What exactly is it you're trying to do, and who is Jerry? Jerry is my husband, and I'm trying to raise money before he gets back from out of town tomorrow night and kills me. He made me promise not to drive. Not after I totaled our last car in the parking lot of the 7-Eleven. I wasn't really going to drive, anyway. I just needed to move the car out of the way so I could open the green cabinet. I broke it anyway. You broke a car? That's it over there. The BMW with the wrinkled door. Oh, well, just relax, relax. Crying won't help any, Miss Pris. It's Brown. What's Brown? My name. I'm Darlene Brown. I didn't introduce myself. I'm Maisie. Real pleasure to meet you, Maisie. Can you help me? Well, let me see if I understand. You broke your husband's car, and now you're trying to raise the money to fix the car before he comes back into town and you have to tell him you broke it. Yes, exactly. I have part of the money already. I just need a little more. How much? $218.37. Well, honey, if you're looking to me for a donation, I'm afraid you're really out of luck. Oh, no. I don't want money from you. I want you to help me. Show me how to earn it. You know, tonight. Fast. $218.37. Are you telling me you want to turn tricks? Oh, no tricks. Honest. I'll really do it. Uh-huh. You mean the big it? Yes. I wouldn't try to cheat anybody, really. I'm sure you wouldn't, sweet thing. Listen, Darlene, this is stupid, okay? Just go home and put the car in the garage. And when hubby gets home, you just slip into your sexiest nightgown. And, uh, you know, little Jerry, well, you need to pout real pretty. And little Jerry will forgive you if you treat him just right. I don't think so. Jerry isn't very, well... Jerry doesn't get very excited, if you know what I mean. I mean, that sort of thing, it's just never been very important to Jerry. Well, maybe you need to liven up your technique a little bit, honey, and turn him on. Even when Jerry's turned on, he isn't very understanding. Can't you just give me a few tips so I don't make a fool of myself? I guess it wouldn't hurt any. Might be kind of fun. <laughs> Lord knows you won't be much competition. <laughs> Let's see, uh, well, first you need some party clothes. These are my party clothes. My, my. Well, uh, at least open a few buttons. Are you wearing a bra? Why, of course I'm wearing a... Oh, 
Well, well open the bl open your blouse down until the bra shows. Out here? Well, honey, do you want to do this or are you ready to go home? Well, that's a little bit better and, and uh, you're going to need to shorten up that skirt. Now you're looking good, girl. You carry in protection? Protection? You carry a gun? No, girl, not a gun. You know, protection. Oh, dear. Well, you're going to need an assortment of all different sizes and shapes. Shapes? I thought men were all shaped, you know, pretty much the same. Sort of elongated. Well, some are more elongated than others. How do I... I mean, what do I say to a man? Does he ask me out on a date? Or do I ask him? No, come on, I'll show you. The driver's alone, it's a nice car. Hey, sugar, come to mama! He didn't stop. Well, hell, girl, they don't all stop. Relax, it's early yet. Should I try that? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Yoo-hoo! Yoo-hoo! Oh, dear. I'm not doing very well, am I? That's all right, you'll catch on. Look, here comes a John on foot. Stand back, I'll show you now. Well, hello, handsome. What's your name? Uh, John. Well, now, ain't that something. I was just telling my girlfriend there that you looked like a John to me. Didn't I say he looked like a John? That's amazing. What say you and me go someplace and party down? I'd sure like that. Where can we go? I know just the place, but you'll have to pay for the room. I've got money. How much is it? Well, $10 for the room. For me, $30 an hour or till you pass out, whichever comes first. I, um... I've got to meet somebody, but I'll try to get back later. Okay, you do that, sweet cheeks. I'll be right here. Thirty dollars? That's all you make? Thirty dollars? That means I'd have to do it seven times. I I haven't done it seven times since graduation night. Well, you make it sound like you're running the, the cross country mile or something. Besides, they don't all pay thirty dollars. Some go higher. Really? How do you know what to charge? Well, you look at how they're dressed. I mean, if they're wearing a nice suit, they might even go as high as a hundred. Seven times. Well, there was a time when I made two, three, maybe even five hundred dollars a pop. That's before the oil men went broke. You know, oil men are always complaining about how rough times are, but nobody ever mentions the hooker recession. I never thought of that. Well, of course not, nobody does. Well, I tell you what, those oil men, those boys know how to party. But their cookie jar got broke, and here I am working the streets. It's a damn shame, that's what it is. You know, I had class. I was top of the line. I had class. I had style. There was nothing like me. Hey, baby, come strap this on! Who's the fluff? Ain't she new? We don't need no more new girls on this street, Maisie. You know that. Relax. She's just an amateur. She needed to earn some quick cash, and I'm showing her just how to do it. You're running a vocational training school for hookers. <laughs> Damn, I wish I'd thought of that. No, she don't want to be a hooker. She just wants to fix her car. <laughs> Actually, it's Jerry's car. See, Jerry is my husband, and he's out of town until tomorrow night. And I have to raise two hundred and eighteen dollars and thirty-seven cents. I was just trying to. Back I don't want to hear your sob story, girly. Save it for the Johns. You can swap stories with them. They love it. 
Stand up, girlie. Let me have a look at you. You know, you kind of remind me of myself when I first started out. I was 19 years old. My first husband kicked me out of the house. I didn't have nowhere to go. I was standing on the corner. Come to think of it, it was that one right over there. Anyway, I was standing on the corner. This real good looking guy driving a caddy pulls up to the curb, rolls out his window, offers me a hundred bucks. Just like that. Well, I called him a couple of bad names and he laughed and drove off. Left me standing there all red faced. What did you do? Where did you go? Two hours later, when I was scared enough, I turned a ten dollar trick at the park. I went out and got myself a hot meal and a room for the night. Yeah, that was thirty feet and over thirty years ago and she hadn't raised her rates yet. Don't listen to that crap, kid. I do all right. I got a little home south of town, garden, patio in the back, and my neighbors don't throw their garbage out the window. We got these big green carts that sit out by the curb. Twice a week, a truck comes around and empties them. Real class. Two years, I want to have it paid off, and I'm going to retire and grow roses. And if any man steps foot on my property, I'm going to take my damn shotgun and blow his head off. She doesn't seem to like men very much. How can she be uh, in this business if she doesn't like men? Girl, there ain't a full-grown woman around who likes men very much. The dumbest animal on earth is a full-grown man, a horny full-grown man. Show him a leather mini skirt, a pair of high heels, and his brain turns into Play-Doh. Well, my Jerry's not dumb. He's really very smart. He knows a lot about everything. And he's always correcting me when I say stupid things. Of course, I don't have a leather miniskirt. I might be able to close down early tonight. Hello, handsome. You looking for me? Well, I might be at that. Do you know how to treat a man right? A real man? Oh, I think so. I seem to recall I met a real man once. Back in 92. I think he's dead now. How much? Well, that depends. On uh, what you want to do and how long you think you can last. I want whatever you're best at, and I can outlast any woman around. For a hundred bucks, I'll plunk your magic twanger till you beg to go home. What about your friend there? No, you'd be better off with me. I think I might like a beginner, and you're a cute little thing. How much, little girl? $218.37. $218? And 37 cents. That's the stupidest damn thing I've ever. Well, I can have both of you for 50 bucks. Who are you kidding? Don't go getting pushy, Buster. I mean, we set our own rates. If you pay, you play. Otherwise, go look somewhere else. You uppity two-bit tramp. I'll mess you up till you can't work for a month. Watch out, Maisie. He'll do it. He beat me up last night and cheated me out of 100 bucks. You shut your mouth, little girl. You know what's good for you. We got friends around here, mister. Go away now, you can leave walking. If you keep harassing us, you're gonna go away in a meat wagon. You little cheap slut, you dare to threaten me? Oh. Yeah. What the hell's going on here? You keep your fat ass out of this, or I'll take care of you soon as I finish this little bitch. You think you can take care of all five of us, tough guy? You brides are crazy, all of you. Stay the hell away from me. Hi. Thanks. 
I wish I could have belted him one. Guys like that can take the fun out of hooking, you know? Do you all really have fun? I'm beginning to think I'm making a mistake. Well, Darlene here is new to the streets, as if you couldn't tell. Yeah, she was trying to make some quick bucks to save her marriage, and I'm trying to show her how. You mean this little girl has a husband at home, and she's out hooking for him? That's terrible. Husbands are harder to work for than pimps. Her husband doesn't know anything about it. She's trying to earn some money real quick before he gets back into town. You see, she, she broke his car and she's trying to earn the money to fix it. But I'm starting to think this isn't going to work. I don't think I can do it. Not with someone like that last guy. He scared me. As mad as Jerry gets, he's never hit me. Well, you certainly don't belong out here on the streets with us. What do you say, girls? We can't leave her out here, can we? How much money does she need? $218.37. Well, that's a lot of money. And it's still early. I don't know about you guys, but I haven't made much so far. I wasn't thinking about one of us giving it to her. I thought maybe someone else would provide the money. You mean, you saw? Oh, sure. What the hell? Why not? I picked that clown's pocket. Well, he owed me a hundred bucks. Whatever's left over, the kid can have it for a car. Over four hundred bucks. That'll take care of me. And you too, kid. Maisie, what should we do with the rest? I think it's time for a coffee break. What do you say we let some poor misunderstood John buy a drink for all of us over at Wanda's? You know, and while we're there, we can get Wanda to give us a great big envelope, and then we can mail poor John's wallet back to him. What do you say? I got a better idea. Let's enclose a letter to his wife. We can all sign it. Well, come on, girl. You're invited to... It's all right now. You can go home. Tomorrow you put the car in the garage and everything's gonna turn out just fine. And I don't have to do it? Nope. You don't have to do it. Well, how?